Hello boxing fans, today I'm talking about two fights and they're both in the same one. Um, the first, and I'm first going to start with the undercard which is Rico Ramos, which is an awful, oh no, an awesome name, I apologise, awesome name, versus, and I'd get on this one, this one's a hard one to pronounce, Guillermo Rigondeau, Olympic gold medalist. I can't believe I got that one right, that was pronunciation at its best. I'm going to try and keep that going. Starting with Rico Ramos. He obviously won the WBA uh, World Super Bantamweight title from Akifumi Shimoda in the United States. See, that was also awesome pronunciation by me. Unbelievable. And Rico is good. He's 24 years old. He's 5 for 5. That's uh, average for this division. Uh, six, he's got 69 inch reach, which isn't bad. And he's got a 55% KO ratio, so he's not going to knock no one out. Realistically, even though he knocked his last opponent out, he basically wins one by knockout, wins one by unanimous decision. That's it. How it, the that's how that's like a pattern of his record if you look at it. And um, you might say in this fight he has also got the experience fighting more fights. In fact, he's fought over 10 more fights. He's fought 12 more fights. Now Guillermo Rigondeau, that's an awesome name. It's only had eight fights. <laughs> now I don't understand. How come he's only fighting for a world title after only eight fights? He must be the shit. And um, yeah, so he's the current interim WBA World Super Bantamweight title. So he's basically the number one contender. And he won that after TKO and his opponent Willie Casey in the first round in Ireland, Dublin. So he did. And um, that was so shit. And the Cuban is now known as the Jackal, obviously. He's got a 75% kill ratio. He's only four 36 rounds, so he's not he's not got many under his belt, but all of his fights have been pretty much tests. His first fight was... But the first two fights weren't nothing, really, but they were against guys with winning records. His third fight was a 10-round fight, and he won that. And this guy had 59 wins, by the way, so... This guy's quite good, and he had and he won that by TKO in the third. His next fight was, you know, his decision over eight rounds, so he's got the stamina, and he won it wide. And then his next fight was a knockout in the first. Later on, he took another guy seven rounds, and then on his second to last fight, he beat a guy called Ricardo Cordoba by a split decision. And and this one, they both went down, which showed they can both have shaky chins, but they both got. And in the sense, they both got up, so they got good chins. And in this one, it's going to be Rico Ramos, who, as far as I'm aware, has never been down in his professional career. Just checking that one. Yes, yeah, it says he's never been been down in his professional career against Guillermo Rigondeau, who is skillful and he is powerful. Now, obviously, when it comes down to it, who has the natural um, advantages? Um, it turns out the taller is Rico, the guy with the reach is Rico, and but the guy who's quicker is Guillermo. The guy who's probably more powerful is Guillermo, and technique-wise, Guillermo is better. Even at this early stage in his career, he's probably going to be... Guillermo's being touted to be a bit of a multi-weight world champion, I'd say, maybe two-weight world champion. And he's got good things in his... In his um, future you might you might say into this now as I've got another one to do and I'm gonna say Guillermo wins this one by unanimous decision maybe split decision and it's gonna all 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 in all come down to the better the better boxing ability because they can both box they can both punch they can both do everything but the better one at this stage in his career is probably it's probably Guillermo Rigondeau Okay, the second fight that I want to look at is Zolt Airdrie versus Tavoris Cloud. Obviously, Tavoris Cloud is he's actually really quality. I think, to be honest, um, he's five ten, which isn't tall for light heavyweight. But what he what he loses in height and reach, he makes up for in tenacity and aggression. And then there's Zolt Airdrie, who is a previous cruiserweight world champion, and now he's fighting for the IBF light heavyweight. World Championship. He's from Hungary. Fought. He's he's not really fought just in one country. He's fought the majority of his fights in Germany, but he's also had a few in America. And he's he's undefeated. They're both undefeated, and that's 
obviously great for boxing. It's great for this matchup. Zolt's got the experience. He's also got the reach advantage. No, he's not. He's not got the reach advantage. In fact, he he gives away four inches in his reach. We're both about the same height. The only difference is, I would say, age. Zolt is eight years older. However, he does have an extremely strong chin. In one of his recent fights, he fought against Fragomeni in Germany for the w WBC Cruiserweight title, and in that fight, he held his own against the guy who had 20 pounds on him. Which, if in in terms of what you're thinking about Fragomeni, you you may think that's not much. It's not great. However, 20 pounds is a lot of weight. 20 pounds is the difference between the likes of I don't know. Vladimir Klitschko fighting someone such as Eddie Chambers, for example, that weight makes a difference. And he won that fight. That the he won a decision against the man. Obviously, was the he's also a former light heavyweight champion, and he's coming back for his belt. Except in this fight, he's fighting Tavares Cloud, who is very forward coming. And Tavares Cloud has a. 80% knockout ratio, I would estimate that as, and, and Zolt has a 50%. So Zolt can box, Zolt, we know if he, if the situation calls for it, he can bang. However, Tavoris, we know he can bang, we know that's his game plan. We haven't really seen Tavoris come out and box cleverly. When I say cleverly, I don't mean the boxer, I mean in the mind. He doesn't come out and box fights, he comes out and he's willing to fight, and that's what makes him so exciting. And in the light heavyweight division, there's a lot of really exciting fights out there right now. And I think this is the fight that we need just to like set up so many more excellent fights out there. And I honestly think that Tavoris Cloud is probably one of the bigger names in this division right now. So I'm just going to get straight into the um, I'm going to get straight into the prediction. And I think that this could go two ways. I think that Tavoris Cloud wins this by oh. I, Probably unanimous decision. I don't see him knocking out Airdrie. I think that Airdrie's got just too good a chin for Tucker well to be stopped really. Unless there's like some kind of a robbery where the referee gets involved well too early. But I doubt that will happen. I think there's too much, too much um, emphasis on referees right now. And um, yeah, or oh, Airdrie could outbox him over the long distance. However, I don't think that's going to happen because I think he'll gas himself out. I think Tavares being younger, quicker. Um, better stamina, he'll impose himself on top of Erdry, and I think that over a long distance he'll come out on top. I would think it'd be a unanimous decision. I'm tempted actually to say late stoppage, but I'm going with unanimous decision.